presents The Shadow, the mystery man who strikes terror in the very hearts of shopsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today, Cold Death. <music> Ladies and gentlemen, an event of unusual interest will be broadcast from this studio at the end of the program. Be sure to listen. And before today's exciting adventure with The Shadow begins, I'd like to offer a suggestion for home heating comfort. The next time you need fuel... Order Blue Coal, America's finest anthracite. You don't have to get a full supply. The Blue Coal dealer will be glad to send you a trial ton. Use it, compare it with your regular fuel in every way. It's ten to one you'll find Blue Coal gives you better heat at less cost. So order Blue Coal by name. Phone your order to your nearest Blue Coal dealer tomorrow. Well, what do you want, Dawson? Why don't you let Carverville tend to business? Fine mess you've made of things. Oh, so you've seen the story in the paper about conditions up in the village. Yes, you brainless fool. Don't you know you can't keep things quiet by manhandling a reporter? Now, wait a minute, boss. I can explain that. We had to rough that reporter up. He was taking pictures. Well, I don't want any excuses. I pay you to manage my mail. If there's any more publicity about living conditions up there, you'll find yourself out of a job. Now, get out. Don't bother me with details. Get out. Okay, Mr. Carver, I won't bother you with details. But if anybody else comes up to Carverville snooping around and asking questions, we'll make them wish they never heard of the place. Commissioner Weston, I tell you, it's an outrage. Don't you agree, Cranston? It's a pretty sorry state of affairs, Commissioner. Uh, granted, the conditions existing in this little mill village Daniel Carver owns are an outrage. Why, he ought to be kicked out of this club. What do you think, Cranston? I agree, if the newspaper accounts are true. Sickness, half a dozen deaths recently. The authorities ought to be able to do something about a man like Carver. Uh, apparently not. He owns Carverville, Lux, Stock and Barrel. Hmm. Speak of the devil, here's Carver now. Yeah, good evening, gentlemen. I gather you're discussing me and the maliciously distorted story about Carverville that appeared in the papers. As a matter of fact, we were, Mr. Carver. Yeah. Won't you sit down and give us your side of the story? There's nothing to discuss. There isn't one word of truth in that reporter's story. The people in Carverville are perfectly satisfied. They don't complain. Uh, perhaps they don't dare. They have no reason to complain, Cranston. I give them work in my mill, provide them with homes. Homes? Why, they make the worst city slums look like Park Avenue. Mm, Carlville is my affair. Well, maybe so, but this club may have something to say about your membership, Daniel Carver. Uh, this club, a uh, bunch of mawkish busybodies. What do I care? Vote me out. No one ever speaks to me here anyway. Go ahead, vote me out. Vote me out, go ahead. Must be some justice, some law. Oh, he's within the law. But now here's a case for an amateur criminologist like yourself, Cranston? Yes, there must be some way of helping those poor devils up in Carverville. Some way of dealing with a man like Carver. The Mark Cranston, would you mind telling me the reason for this long drive in zero weather? You'll soon see the reason, Margot. We're now entering Carverville. Take a good look at it. Oh, how drab. How awful. Look, Lamont, broken windows stuffed with paper. I'm beginning to understand why you're here. But how did you hear about it? Daniel Carver, the man who owns this charming little mill village, is a fellow club member of mine. What are you going to do, Lamont? I don't know exactly until I've talked to some of these people. As Lamont Cranston or the Shadow? As a nameless social worker for the present, Margot. But I have a strong hunch the Shadow will have to play a big part if anything is to be done to help these people. Hmm. Here we are. Want some gas, mister? Uh, no, thanks, but could you tell me how to get to Mrs. Tucker's house? What do you want? Ma Tucker's got enough trouble already, what with her old man and kid dying since the cold set in. I read about it in the papers. We've come here to help. Listen, mister. Carverville folks ain't got much. 
But we ain't asking or welcoming no nosing around from strangers. If you'll just point out Mrs. Tucker's house, I'll see what she has to say. Well, right over there by the creek. But don't say I didn't warn you, mister. Thanks. Come along, Margot. I may need your help to get Mrs. Tucker's confidence. Well, I'll do anything I can. You know, Lamont, there's something terrifying about this village. How so? Oh, that man and the way people are watching us from behind curtains in the windows of every house along the street. I'm afraid of something, Margot. Of what? That's just what I hope to discover in this house. Oh, there's something sinister about this place. Wait, Margot. Someone's coming to the door. What do you want, mister? Are you Mrs. Tucker? I'm Ma Tucker. What do you want? May we come in? You say what you've got to say. Please, Mrs. Tucker, we've come to help you. No, you... Oh, all right. Come in. It don't matter. Nothing matters now. Thank you. Mrs. Tucker, we realize you've been through a terrible ordeal. Losing your husband and son within a week. Well, I ain't no worse off than anybody else in Carverville. What are you going to do? I got one boy left, Sam. He works in the mill. Mrs. Tucker, how much rent do you people have to pay for these houses? Hey, you better get out of here, mister. You don't want to get me in more trouble for talking to you at all. You better get out. Who would make trouble for you because you talk to us? Never you mind that, mister. And if you know what's good for you, you'll get out of Carverville before Dawson and the others from Carverville get here. Hey, Ma, who are these folks? This is my son, Sam. Hello, Sam. Well, howdy. You welfare workers from the city? You might call us that. You've come here to investigate conditions. Uh, they've been asking questions about the houses, Sam, but I didn't tell them nothing. Well, why didn't you, Ma? Huh? I'm sick of all this fear old man Carver and his spies. We kept quiet for years, and, yeah, and what's it got us? What did you get Pa and young Jim? We slave in the mill, and they rob us at Carver's store, and we live in these pigsties that Carver calls houses, and, yeah, and when we're old and sick, he lets us die off like a lot of mangy dogs. Shut up, Sam. Don't talk like that. Somebody here. Well, let him hear. Time somebody heard the truth. Can't you do something, mister? Can't you help us? Somebody don't help us. God only knows where this will end. Thanks for speaking out, Sam. You'll have to help. Lamont, there's a crowd gathering outside. What? I knew it. I knew there'd be now, trouble. You be quiet, Ma. Listen, mister, I got a notion you're all right. Come on, Tucker. Sam, open up. We're going to chase them smart out of strangers out of town. Like we did that reporter. Listen, Sam, we'll have to leave or there'll be trouble. Will you meet me in the next town in a couple of hours? I've got to know everything that's been going on here if I'm to help you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll meet you. Look for my car on Main Street. Come on, Margot. Keep close to me. Lamont, I hope no one saw Sam Tucker meet us down this road as you asked him to. I hope not, Margot. What are you going to do now that he's told you the tragic story of Carverville? Going back to Carverville. Right now, tonight? Yes, first to call on old man Carver. I thought he was in the city. He evidently heard that more strangers were in Carverville this afternoon asking questions. Oh, what a beast Carver must be, Lamont. If he could only be made to see the misery and suffering he's caused. He's going to see it, Margot, tonight. Lamont, there's Carverville. Oh, not that I'm afraid, We're stopping. That's Carver's house right ahead there. Yes, I see a light downstairs, Lamont. What are you going to do? Margot, do you remember Scrooge in... Dickens Christmas Carol. Yes, and Carver is worse than Scrooge ever thought of being. Tonight, Daniel Carver is going to feel more remorse than Ebenezer Scrooge ever did. He deserves it. I'll wait in the car, Lamont. Mm, it's bitter cold. Well, if those poor people down there in those flimsy houses can stand it, I can. I'll wait here. But how are you going to make Carver visit those poor people? Margot, tonight, Daniel Carver is going on a sightseeing tour, personally conducted by the Shadow. In just a moment, we will continue with the second part of The Shadow's thrilling adventure. While you are engaged in last-minute preparations for Christmas, don't neglect the health and comfort of your family. Be sure of a cozy, warm home during the holidays by ordering a supply of blue coal. No matter how cold or how mild the weather, blue coal is the most economical fuel for heating or cooking purposes. Up in the Arctic regions, where the temperature today is at least 60 degrees below zero, Fur traders and trappers are keeping warm with blue coal. They've used other fuels only to find that blue coal will keep them warm more economically than any other fuel. Blue coal is a Pennsylvania anthracite, the fuel that burns long and steadily. It is the fuel that furnaces, parlor stoves, and cooking ranges in New England were especially designed to burn. 
and the finest Pennsylvania anthracite is blue coal, mined by the Glen Alden Coal Company, employing American labor, and it is transported by American railroads. Every carload is laboratory tested for purity and uniform size before shipment. Blue coal comes in all domestic sizes, egg, stove, chestnut, and pea size. For economy's sake, and for greatest comfort in cold weather, insist on blue coal. Phone your nearest blue coal dealer. You'll find his name listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. Dawson, I told you if there's any more trouble up here in Carverville, I'd fire you, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. Well, there ain't been no trouble, Mr. Carver. Not yet. If that guy that was here this afternoon comes back tonight, we'll make him wish he'd never heard of Carver. Well, what makes you think he will come back? I know he's coming back. Tonight. You got Sam Tucker to meet him down in the next town. How do you know that? <laughs> I took a rubber hose to the kid when he came back about an hour ago. He wouldn't talk. We got enough out of him to know that that social worker is up to something. Well, I don't want any shooting and killing now. You just leave that fellow to me, Mr. Carver. You said you didn't want to be bothered with details. Uh, what are you going to do, Dawson? Well, nothing much. But don't you worry. There ain't no law against a fellow being shot accidental while he's snooping around in the dark. Mm. You just leave the details to me. So long, boy. Yeah. Well, there's a fool to come up here from the city tonight. No cold country house. No electricity. Nothing but candles. Yeah, the wind even blows the door open. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Who blew out that candle? The wind. The wind blew out the candle. Are you afraid of the dark? Daniel Carver... Who are you? What do you want? I have no money here. I don't want your money. I have come for you. Who are you? I've been called fear, conscience, remorse. But I am best known to your kind as the shadow. The shadow? I don't believe in things like that. You're a man. I hear your voice. If you're one of those stupid fools from the village... You've got any idea of killing me, you'd better think first. You'll hang for it. Since you will not believe that I am the shadow, let us pretend I am one of those unfortunates from your village. Let us pretend that here in the darkness I am standing with a gun pointed at your heart. Well, what do you want of me? I want you to come with me. Come. No, 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 you're going to murder me. I won't leave this house. I won't go with you. Come, or I'll use the gun you are so sure I have in my hand, even though you can't see the gun, or my hand, or me. Yeah. All right. All right, I'll come. I'll do anything, only don't shoot. If it's money you want, I'll get it for you. Get in your car. Uh, first, let me get an overcoat. It's bitter cold. No. It's time you learned what it feels like to be cold. Uh, where are we going? Drive down to that squalid sink of misery that bears your name. To Carverville. Don't cry out. Don't try to escape me. For I'm right behind you. In the back seat of the car. What do you want me to do in the village? Stop at that little bridge. Be careful, Carver. I can read your thoughts. You're thinking you'll cry out, attract attention, and get away from me. But you'll never get away unless you do exactly as I tell you for the next few minutes. What are you going to make me do? You will go where I tell you. And listen. And watch. And what if I meet someone? If you should... Don't speak. Yeah. There's a little bridge. Stop the car. Now get out of the car, Daniel Carver. Yeah. This is the Tucker house. Walk to that lighted window over there. Stand there by that broken pane stuffed with paper. Why have you brought me here? You better look out. 
Bill Dawson, my foreman, and some men are out looking for some stranger that's been snooping around here. We might be shot by mistake. That is a chance we must take. Carver, look into that room and listen. All right. Well, all right, Ma, listen, Ma. Oh, Everything's going to turn out all right. Those folks who were here today, they're going to do something. Oh, I'm trying to hope so, Sam. But hoping comes mighty hard when hope's been killed so often. Mm. Pa's dead. Your brother's dead. Listen to that. Oh, Sam, you got to go away. you got to go far away. After what's happened, Dawson will fix you good. It won't be just a beating. He'll fix it so something will happen to you at the mill. you got to go away, son. Yeah, but I can't leave you, Ma. Not even long enough to hunt another job. Oh, don't you fret about me, Sam. I ain't got much longer on this earth anyhow, son. You get away. You get away from here while you've got a chance. Oh, Ma. Ma, you're crying. <laughs> you didn't even cry when Pa died. Seemed like I couldn't. Seemed like he was better off dead. Because he was free of old man Carver at last. <laughs> at last. Oh, Ma, at don't... Last. Come, Carver. I have something else to show you. What? what are you trying to do? Where are you taking me now? You will see. Tell me, Carver, have you ever heard the story of Scrooge? Well, what has the story of Scrooge got to do with me? You are Scrooge, Daniel Carver, a 20th century Scrooge. And this is Christmas. You'd never believe it to look down the streets of this mill town of yours. Would you, Carver? Then what do you expect me to do about it? You are not your brother's keeper, are you, Carver? Uh, let me go. My hands are freezing. Still thinking of yourself? Is that the Christmas spirit, Carver? Uh, let me go and, and I'll do something. Send some Christmas baskets. That would ease your conscience, wouldn't it? No, Carver. You're not going to get off so easy. I've, I've seen enough. Where are you taking me now? Just a little way. A few steps to that lighted window over there. To that house with a car standing in front of it. Uh, if they can afford a car... That they... is a doctor's car. Your villagers don't own cars. They don't own anything. Go to that lighted window there. Look in. See what is happening. Listen. There's frost on the glass. I can't see. There's another broken pane. The hole is filled with paper to keep out the cold. Like the Tucker's window. Push the paper aside. All right. I will. Try and be calm, Mrs. Anderson. I know it's hard, but you must for the child's sake. I'll try, Doctor. I, I will try. I can't help feeling the way I do. My husband dying of pneumonia only last month. Now Judy going the same way. Oh, there's still hope. I'd move her to a hospital if there were one near enough. I wish there were only some way of keeping these rotten carver houses warm. But you might as well try to heat a barn. Listen, Carver. Mommy. Yes, darling. I'm right here, Judy, dear. Mommy's here. Mommy, could, could I have Cecile? Of course you can, honey. Here's your doll, Judy. Mommy, do you think Santa Claus will bring me a real doll? I hope so, Judy. I, I'll ask him. Come. <laughs> Come, Mrs. Anderson. She may sleep now. We'll try to keep the room warm. That's all we can do now. That and hope. Hope for the best. Look at that child, Daniel Carver. She's dying. And you and you alone are to blame. No, stop. Don't. Don't torture me anymore. If that child dies, Carver... There will be no candles. No gay candles on a gift-laden Christmas tree. But white candles shedding a ghostly light 
around a packing box coffin. No, no, stop. It will be the monument to your life no. of selfish greed. No. And a cross you will bear through all eternity. No. Unless... Unless... Unless what? Unless you make amends. I'll do anything. I'll do anything to make amends. No, I didn't know. I didn't lie and selfish. No baskets of fruit or pennies in the snow will wipe out your sins against these long-suffering people, Carter. I know. I know. I'll make everything right. And that little girl, she needs medicine, a warm house. Let me go in and get the doctor to move her to my house on the hill. I'll get specialist. I'll do anything to save her life. Wait, Carver. That is only the beginning. What of all the others? What of these death traps you call homes? I'll tear them all down, burn them, build new ones, houses that are warm and comfortable and safe. I swear it. But tell me, who are you? How are you everything for showing me what I've been doing to these people who depend on me? I told you once before, I am the shadow. But you are a man. Why can't I see you? I have clouded your mind, made it impossible for you to see me. You will never see me. Never hear my voice again, Daniel Carver. If you keep your word. I will keep my word. I swear it. If you don't, the shadow will return. And the next time... Al! Hey, Al! You seen any of that Oh, hey, Bill! Shadow. It's my foreman, Bill Dawson and Al Trimble. Yes, I know. They mean to kill a man. If they can find him. They're after some fellow that was here this afternoon with a young woman. Welfare workers, I think. What will we do? Let them come. This is your first test. You are responsible for their acts. What are you going to do, Carver? But they, they might shoot us by mistake. They've got shotguns. This is your chance, Carver. If that fellow's around here, we'll find him out. Go around the back of Tucker Shack and take a look. Okay. I'm just itching to draw a bead on that nosy city fellow. Now's your chance to deal with Dawson. What are you going to do, Carver? I'll show you. Just watch me. Don't shoot. Dawson. Dawson, don't shoot. It's me, Carver. Carver. Hey, what are you doing here? You're coming with an ace of blowing your head off. I've come here to see what I've been doing to these people by giving you a free hand. Well, you said you didn't want to be bothered. I know. I know. I'm to blame. I've been blind. But that's all finished now. I'm going to make this village all over, build new homes, make up for all the misery I've caused these people. <laughs> You're getting kind of soft, ain't you, Carver? You won't think so when I tell you that you are through, fired, you and Al Trimble and all your kind. Listen here, you mealy mouth old skinflint. You can't fire me. I've done your dirty work too long. You get out of Carverville, you're through, Dawson. Yeah, that's what you think. You or nobody else is firing me. Put down that shotgun, Dawson. You'll hang for this. The devil, I will. It'll be an accident. An accident like what's going to happen to that city. Dawson, son. don't you pull that trigger, you fool. Say your prayers, you rat. Ah, you, you missed. No. No, something, something knocked the gun up in the air. You didn't, Carver, you couldn't. Something just about knocked the gun out of my hand. <laughs> you are quite right, Bill Dawson. I saved you from committing a cold-blooded murder. What was that? Who said that? The shadow, Dawson. Shadow? A ghost? Call me what you like, but I am here, helping Daniel Carver, helping the people of this village. Bill! Hey, Bill! Dawson! You get him? Al, Al, come on, we're getting out of here. Something just talked to me. Ah, you must be drunk, Bill. Hey, what's that over there? It's old man Carver, but it wasn't him. It knocked my gun right out of my hand. Come on, I tell you, this place is haunted. Ah, there ain't no such thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Listen to that. Where is it? Come on, tell me, where's it coming from? Who's that laughing? It ain't Carver. Yeah, it did sound kind of like a ghost. And I don't see nothing. Go. Go quickly, both of you. Get out of Carverville and don't come back. Come on, Al, you fool. Let's get out of here. Hey, Bill, wait. Wait, don't leave me here alone with that thing. Wait. Shadow. Shadow, are you still here? Yes, Daniel Carver. Oh, thank you, whoever, whatever you are. Thank you for saving my life. I saved you because you have much work to do. If there was only some way of repaying you for making me see the truth, you should have credit for all this. Just bring happiness to the people of this village, Daniel Carver. That will be your repayment in full to the shadow. I'll do it. Look, Carver, the people of the village are getting up enough nerve 
come out of their house. I'll call them all together right now. I'll tell them what I'm going to do. I'll make this the happiest Christmas season they've ever had. Yes, I believe you will. Daniel Carver. Uh, what happened in here? Who's that? Yeah, who, who's been shooting? Anybody hurt? Hey, golly, it's Mr. Carver. Well, what's he doing here? What do you want, Mr. Carver? Uh, uh, hurt wait Mr. a moment. Carver? Wait a moment, all of you. Oh, I know you have good reasons to hate. Tonight I've been shown why. Something, someone came to me. Oh, I don't know what it was. I don't care. All I know is he was like a spirit of God. He has shown me how to create a new Carverville. A happy Carverville where the spirit of Christmas will shine all these years through. Men and women, a shadow has brought us light. This Carver, this is the peace on earth. Goodwill toward men. Friends, this afternoon we have an event of unusual importance to bring to you. The Shadow Program is to be honored with one of radio's most coveted awards, which heretofore has been captured by other outstanding programs such as Jack Benny, Fred Allen, and the March of Time, the Pilot Radio Award. Mr. Harry A. Smith, president of Blue Coal, will accept this award from Mr. Sylvester Thompson, vice president of the Pilot Radio Corporation, who will make the official presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. During the past year, the Pilot Radio Award Society has been making periodic awards to various programs on the air which represent the highest achievements in their particular fields of entertainment. And so it's only natural that your program, The Shadow, should have come to our attention. For we can easily understand the reason why The Shadow has held its high place in popular favor for so many years. It brings all the thrill and flavor of mystery drama to radio audiences. In addition, the committee commends you very highly upon bringing some of the finest actors of the American stage into the homes of so many radio listeners. Recognizing your noteworthy contribution to fine radio entertainment, I take pleasure in presenting to you, Mr. Smith, the Pilot Radio Award of Merit, and I am certain that the shadow will continue to delight radio audiences for many years to come. Thank you very much, Mr. Thompson. On behalf of the Glen Alden Coal Company and the D.L. and W. Coal Company, producers and sellers of blue coal, it gives me great pleasure to accept this award. We greatly appreciate this recognition of our efforts to entertain the radio public. We realize, however, that the credit is due to those who prepared, directed, and presented the shadow. The Blue Coal Dealers of America join me in expressing their appreciation to our very able artists who have presented this entertainment and our thanks to you for this recognition of their efforts. I assure you that they will endeavor to keep their future presentations of the same high quality that we endeavor to maintain in every ton of blue coal. The story you have just heard is copyrighted by The Shadow Magazine. The characters in this story are entirely fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, Blue Pole, America's famous anthracite, will again present another thrilling adventure of the shadow. Be sure to listen, and be sure to burn Blue Coal, the solid fuel for solid comfort.